like I, I think my my comment is more along the lines of like a solution, uh, or rather current solutions, right? And talking about them. So I think um, you know, like a lot of the points that are brought up here are incredible, incredible. Um, but you know, getting them to parliament and getting them towards uh, towards like actual possibility. Um, is a different matter altogether. But let's look at the, the proposals that are in Parliament now and let's try to find ways to support them better and to reframe you know, our conversations with our friends and our family um, to, to make sure that you know, they also kind of rally behind it and, and understand why we need to support these policies, right? why we need to coalesce around them. So I think the one that personally as an economic student and as just like a, 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 like a Singaporean myself, somebody who cares about making sure that everybody has some place to live is um, the, the proposal that's been brought up by PSP, Leong Man Wai, right? So I, I think that um, like I, I don't really like the way that the PAP has, has responded to that proposal because there's almost a non-negotiable aspect to it, which is oh, you know, the cost of, of the land cannot be discounted because um, it's part of our past reserves, right? But let's look, let's look at this thing, idea of past reserves and how it's really something that's kind of arbitrary, right? Because in the past, um, like these past reserves have not been untouchable. In fact, they have been very touchable for corporations. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you look at this thing called the Special Risk Sharing Initiative, SRI, during the global financial crisis between 2008 and 2009, the government used the past reserves to guarantee 80% of risk on bank loans to corporations, including unsecured credit working capital loans, aka corporations were allowed to borrow up to $5 million worth of loans from our past reserves without having any assets backing those loans. But then when the past reserves are used to fund our housing, oh, it's a different matter altogether. It's untouchable. We cannot touch. But let's, let's take a look at how land cost right, is priced for things that we all agree, even the government agrees, is supposed to be for public use. So currently, right, hospitals, schools, like primary schools, secondary schools, those are not priced uh, at land cost. Why? Because we understand that that is inherently an investment in the, com in, in the country. Why is it that land cost for housing is not considered an investment? Like Singaporeans are an investment in Singapore, right? Like, why is it that we can't be seen as... Like, why, why is it that something as simple as land or something as simple as property has to always be financialized, has to always be invested and grown? You know, why is it that um, money that is stagnant um, in our reserves is seen as growing when when that money is spent on us, it's not seen as growing. But we're growing our children, we're growing our lives, we're going to school, we're going to work, we are living together, we are hugging each other and being, having fun together, right? Like, why is that not a form of growing? Yeah, so that's, that's a question that I want to pose and I think that's a way that we can frame this discussion about land cost and about past reserves to our friends and our family so that we can better support like, policies that are already on the parliament floor but are not by, by receiving a lot of derision.